Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. This is what my partner calls the home room. Humans are all different. And when it comes to spirituality, as many kinds of humans are the types of spirituality, it's personal. Love is personal. The acceptance of things you cannot see based upon emotions is personal. And so in this room, there is no consensus of sameness where everyone is on board for a certain thing. The difference, dear ones, between a spiritual person and a religious person. They both honor God in their own way. The religious person, however, follows rules that are set, that they believe in and that they believe are correct, that others have passed down or traditions or history or books. And they are then structured into that and want to be. And in the structure, somehow, there is comfort. A spiritual person has no doctrine. A spiritual person must then develop on their own where they'll go, what they'll do, what they believe in, what they won't believe in, what makes sense, what doesn't. It's harder. And so we start again with the basics as we do every single time in these first channels of the day there are questions very little teaching there are questions as you sit there human being with all that you are and the years that you have lived are you comfortable that you know how everything works Would there be some kind of an acknowledgement that there is a maturity that you have received from having lived a while where you start to see and acknowledge that you don't know so much that is there. This is a world where silence, science is discovering new realities. Realities that are so strange that you would see so many odd things if you were to be in one of those realities. An acknowledgement from science that there is so much more than what we grew up in as humans. You, my partner, the ones before. If this is the case and you see it in physics, what do you think might exist when you speak about spirit, creation, God, the existence of others you cannot see? Every single human is different. Did I ever tell you that the human mind cannot unscramble multidimensional things. And when they appear before you, the human mind must then perceive them from something it knows, not from something it doesn't know. And so it does its best to unscramble a visual and personal feeling it may be before them. It started early. Moses 
saw a bush that burned. I wonder how the angel felt. That was as good as it got. For it created light, and light can only be created with fire back then. It was glorious, it never stopped. That's what Moses' mind did. It's all he could see. And the burning bush came through history as a burning bush. <laughs> if I could describe what it really was, it's the same thing that humans grapple with all the time. What does an angel look like? Is there such things as an angel? Is there sentience beyond yours? Is there intelligence beyond yours? Does the Creator visit you? And if the Creator does, is it a personal one? I've told you this, the system is known by all. Even those who are religious have a system that acknowledges that there somehow is a piece of the Creator inside the human being. And in linearity, the creation story, the linear one, all metaphoric, and as we said before, that was the time when that piece was given to you. So you'd have the knowledge between dark and light. If you're a spiritual person, it goes beyond that. For you're free to see things bigger than you were told. To make up your own mind how big it might be. And it goes from there. If you have a piece of God, the Creator, inside you, doesn't it make sense that there would then be some kind of communication? Most people will say yes, and it's called intuition, and they're right. Intuition does not necessarily come from the brain. The synapse is a computer. It does not give you forethought. Intuitive thoughts come from places way beyond that. We have told you. From a part of the brain called the pineal to the heart. But so much is from that field around your DNA. The DNA does more than you think, and we have said this many times. So interesting, is it not, that all your DNA is absolutely identical, and yet it's responsible for all the variants of the human being. It's the blueprint. It creates the cells. And more than that, it stores information and talks to them. I also told you this. It's now been proven that the presence of DNA in an experiment can change the spin of an electron in a quantum field. What that means in simple English, dear ones, is that in order for that to happen, DNA must have a quantum attribute. There has to be something beyond four dimensions in your DNA for that to happen in that experiment. Next question. If that is the case, then DNA must be involved in something more than you think. What happens when you get trillions and trillions of molecules of DNA together called a human being? All identical. Is it possible there could be a field developed from the sheer number of identical things that have a quantum attribute? And the answer is the Merkaba. 
I just combined the esoteric with science. Did you notice? You cannot separate them. In your attempt, you cannot keep God out of the test tube. You cannot keep God out of the physics lab. And they start to intermingle and they start to show you some of the most spiritual aspects that you've heard all your life. And you never thought they were physics, and they are. Because physics is the way God created things to make them work. If the human Merkaba is created from a field around your DNA, which is only yours and no one else's, that means that field that you have is absolutely unique on the planet. No one has the same field. You'll say, well, wait a minute, identical twins must have the same Merkaba. And we say to you, it would appear they might from a DNA standpoint, but dear ones, there's also interconsciousness, free choice, and that then modifies the field that makes it even more independent from anyone else's. You are beautiful, independent, spiritual beings, every single one. And the reason I tell you this is because things are changing. I've told you that the magnetic master means something. And up until 2012, we never discussed it, not really. What could that mean? Some thought it was a big joke. It is pretty funny. How many magnetic angels do you know? Magnetic fields, dear ones, have quantum attributes, just like gravity and just like light. You sit in the magnetic field of the planet with a Merkaba, which is multidimensional. Are you starting to get the picture? One modifies the other, one changes, the other one changes. 28 years ago, I told you I was here to change the magnetic grid. Those of you who've heard these channels before, know that it would be easy to find out because the compass will tell you. And in 10 years, the magnetic grid moved more than it had in the last 100. Runway numbers changed because their compass headings. All over the planet, there was even fear that you were in for a flip of polarity on the planet. It never happened. It's happened in the past. It won't this time. Those changes were to get you ready for what is upon you now. The shift, dear ones, is greater than you think, and it's starting to accelerate. And I'm going to tell you about it tonight I'll do a state of energy for the planet people think this is where predictions are made there are no predictions dear ones I will tell you a little bit about the potentials that are in the works I'll do some more explaining about what I mentioned one year ago but back to the subject there's more out there than you know that supports everything you are. There are some who say that they can read your health. And they're called medical intuitives. And some are so good at it, they're renowned. And they will have a success rate that is startling greater than 70% where they will simply look at a human being and start to identify the issues, the chemistry, the organs in trouble. And no one knows how they do it. Unless, dear ones, 
the box that you were born in and everything you were told suddenly gets bigger and you can clean off the shelves for new information instead of having a lock that says this is all there is and the new information goes like this what if some have this amazing multi-dimensional sight where they can see something that you cannot because it is there there's so much even in three dimensions that is there that you cannot see different wavelengths that you're not tuned into seeing multi-dimensionality well it's seeable just not explainable the burning bush all through history humans have seen angels they can't explain them the human mind seems odd but it only can justify what it knows and has a lot of trouble with what it doesn't and if presented with something that cannot be it will adjust it to something that can be a ball of spinning translucent somewhat transparent light that has really no clear form is just the beginning of what a multi-dimensional shape would look like to you and the odd thing is this shape as it twirled around can go through three-dimensional matter without any problem and that is simply good physics yet to be shown and that's your angel and then the angel speaks now you have a spinning ball of transparent energy that you can barely see and sense talking to you <laughs> so what does the human do I said it before you put skin and wings on it give it a halo give it a name that's the angel are you following the logic of this you are not able to understand multi-dimensional shapes and figures energy as it comes and goes on this planet and then do the best you can in Ireland where my partner has been twice he speaks of an anomaly there in the grid almost like what you call the Bermuda Triangle the anomaly for hundreds of years has allowed for things to be seen that are multi-dimensional the Bermuda, the Bermuda Triangle is renowned for for problems basically with navigation and magnetics so you can follow the logic in Ireland they see little people fairies and not just the few <laughs> it's practically written into their parliament they all know about it they all honor it some don't talk about it because it's out of fashion and yet they're the first ones to consult a fairyologist when their crops don't grow this is Ireland this is what they have done with multi-dimensionality that they cannot figure out or see their brain picks a shape makes it happen and why am I telling you all of this Because, dear ones you are far more than 3d you may not be able to see what is around you but boy is it there right now I'm going to ask you to feel what is around you even the most linear of you have to reach a point that says okay the box a belief is what I have experienced and what I've been told that's it but that's not who I am completely there are things I was never told because they are unknown and never experienced because I'm not old enough 
And those are the things that I'm asking you to consider. I've said it so many times in these channels to open the box of belief, to allow things in that are bigger than anything you have been told can exist. To break the paradigm of what you think about everything and let in everything. <laughs> For I'll tell you right now that the human being is in a very small box. And if you do that, because you are so independent and unique, you each have different experiences. But the experiences will all have something in common. The God in you, whether you believe it or not, for the first time, can communicate with that which is outside getting outside your box of belief, outside your bubble of comfort. And if you get there slowly, then the things start happening that we have been talking about. Is it possible to stop your aging? To slow it down? With that which is consciousness alone? Answer? Yes. My partner has assembled a team of esoteric scientists coming up for a program, and all they do is measure this effect. For now, it is becoming something that can be seen on the charts with the instruments that you're now inventing something called coherence and the field multi-dimensionality that is measurable through consciousness if consciousness becomes part of physics and it is can you then see how that might affect your chemistry we've said it before a review what is spontaneous remission Unexplained miracles, that's as good as it gets. You can't do it, it is impossible. No human could ever do it, therefore, it is a miracle. Dear ones, let's take it from the sky and put it in you. It is the consciousness of belief that has changed, wiped out disease within the human being. The human does it by themselves with a coherence, with a peace of God inside the human being. That medical intuitive is looking at the Merkaba. That medical intuitive is seeing a multidimensional pattern around you and is able to pick and choose because the Merkaba is filled with information that someday an instrument will be able to see. These are things in the future. Can you imagine the questions that are going to be asked by science when they can see the Merkaba? I'll tell you, first of all, they are not going to call it anything spiritual. It's simply a field that they now can see. <laughs> but oddly enough, that field got its name in Israel from the ascension of Elijah and it means to ride and the riding is done in the chariot that is that bubble when Elijah ascended at some point science and spirituality must meld at some point all the scientists must swallow hard and say the creator is really a creator and we must factor in this. We may not understand it, but it must be factored in. Why you have 23 pairs of chromosomes when everything below you in any chain has 24. Are you starting to understand? There's more than meets the eye. 
And the things that I have been telling you just now are things that those who call themselves metaphysicians know and have believed for hundreds of years. The essence of why homeopathy works at all is that the consciousness of the tincture instructs the human body and the human body obeys and cures the disease. It's the beginning of spontaneous remissions explanation. Consciousness is physics. And now you're starting to understand how your thoughts can literally make the biggest difference more than any drug, more than any program. Put together with common sense, you never have to catch a disease, ever. Did you know that your consciousness alone can keep a disease from attaching itself to you? And so the training begins on this planet the realization that physics and consciousness are allied and the chemistry is controllable starts the engine of teaching what is it in me that I can change what causes what I have instead of reaching for a pill or a drug what is it I can reach for that will enhance what I have and not change it That's why the supplements work, dear ones. Did you understand that they are really homeopathy? A little bigger. These are the things, dear ones, that are changing on the planet. I'm going to tell you more about that tonight. Some potentials of what to look for. It is so gradual. It is happening so slowly. But it's happening. Have you seen a burning bush lately? And the answer is some of you see it every day. You know it's around you. You walk out the door, you know that it's more than just you walking out the door. Maybe there's an entourage, maybe there's a haze. Like the nucleus of an atom has an electron haze. Maybe you're the nucleus and has a haze of circling beautiful multi-dimensional burning bushes you know what I mean you know what I speak of the potential of who you are is far grander than anything you learned been told or even could imagine these are the things that are changing humans at the moment I'll talk more about those changes tonight. But in this little channel, right now, ask yourself, is there something bigger? Am I willing to look at it? When you do this, you're in total control. You always are. Nothing will attach itself to you inappropriately because you are the boss of God inside. I'll be back. Namaste. And so it is.